Can you guys hear me? Comment if you guys can hear me. Hi, Vicky. Can you hear me? There's sound. Awesome. Woohoo. Hi, Rose. Hey, Vicky. Alrighty. Perfect. Hello. Awesome. Okay, so we're going to go over this book. It's called Escaping Leah. Boom. I wrote it. It's all published. Um, the back kind of tells you more about it. There it is. Um, what we'll do is we'll go over it. I'm not going to read the whole entire book to you because that would be a really long time. Um, this book has over 200 pages in it. It would be um, a long time <laughs> if we read every single page. Um, why don't I go ahead and just let you guys know that I wrote this book um, in coordination with some really awesome people. Hi, Mar Marlon. Hi, Maria. So I wrote, I wrote this book, Escaping Leah, with some really, really cool people and a lot of research done. Um... It was to counter the attacks on my religion um, because I wanted to let people let people know that what they heard wasn't true and what they're hearing isn't true and where to get the information from. But in order to let people know that it isn't true, you first have to show them why it isn't true. And you have to do your own research on it, right? So what I did is I ended up writing a book um, on this lady's attacks against my religion, right? Um, I wrote 33 chapters in this book. Yeah, you're hearing me that you heard that right. 33 chapters. Um, so of course I won't be going through them all, but I will definitely go ahead and just, you know, kind of paraphrase, kind of summarize, and all that. Um, I'm gonna read you the foreword so that you kind of understand where I'm coming from on this book. It says this book is presented in its official form and is part of a series exposing the crimes of those attacking new religious movements. This is a record of the author's research and discoveries through many means of internet, printed, and verbal accounts. The author may, may make claims that are offensive, straight, opinionated, and otherwise matter-of-fact. These statements are not official statements of any Scientologist, any Church of Scientology, or any specific member of religious faiths. Again, these are just my these are just my views, my research, and yes, I did you know work with some pretty powerful people, and this is approved for everybody to read. <laughs> um, the series is utterly based on research done from legitimate publications such as legal records that are a public record from around the world, statements made verbally or in writing, as well as direct personal encounters and knowledge. Any information contained inside Escaping Leah is entirely nonfiction work and is backed by the freedom of speech as stated in the United, United Nations in Universal Declaration of Human Rights and the U.S. Constitution. I believe that journalism shouldn't be attacked through verbal, legal, or physical means. The author doesn't have any interest in surrendering to the attackers and stopping with his writings. The author will continue to express his rights. We do hope that you have a better sense of understanding when reading this book. So there's a, there's a quote in this thing. It says, all truth passes through three stages. First, it is ridiculed. Second, it is violently opposed. Third, it is accepted as being self-evident. Arthur Schnopenauer. Pretty awesome dude. So pretty great, pretty great quote. This is again... This is this book, Escaping Leah. I wrote it, my second book in this series. It's a really good one. Definitely a lot of chapters. <laughs> Hi, Wesley. Hi, Jocelyn. Hi, Lisa. Thanks for joining. So the first chapter, I go over the main points that um, this individual spreads, and I fact check it, and I expose it, and I debunk it. It's called Troublemaker, and um, really what this chapter really is about is P 
people coming out and stating things that used to be her former friend and former family member. So you'll see inside, um, inside there's people like actresses and actors and um, former friends, former managers. I got one from um, her friend, um, we're talking, when I'm talking about her friend, I'll only say her name once in this life, her name's Leah Ramini. She's against my religion, she acted like a member of my religion and then decided to attack it. So what I did is I went ahead and exposed her and her lies and why she does what she does and this book has saved a lot of people's lives. A um, lot of a lot of people's lives. They've changed viewpoints. It's a great book. You can get it. Um, debunk, as you said here, Nicola. Debunk means to, and in my words, you can look it up yourself. Debunk means to fact check. Means to expose what. Um, yeah, Marisha. Expose. Yeah, basically disprove disprove with truth. So you show the facts of something, and. Um, Basically, that that in that in essence exposes their lies, and therefore they don't believe the lie or rumor or misconception that was spread. Ta-da! <laughs> Hopefully, I explained that correctly. <laughs> um, Julianne Williams, former friend, has a, has a one and a half page communication that she gave in regards to Leah um, and why she's you know you know. Yeah, no problem, no problem. But um, she, you know, these her friends, former manager, um, another former friend, fa former father-in-law, um, former friend, you may know her, Penny Jones, and she caused in terms of havoc and um, attacks and why she isn't really exposing anything. She's making it up. So you'll, you'll find out more about that in here. I'll read one point in here just to ensure that you get the flow of it. it says there are over 500 incidents of violent crimes threats harassment and other such attempts that have just been brutally illegal that um that are connected to this person okay so she's not a good person nobody should listen to her um There's also a part in here where she's, where I state, um, yeah, lies and deception is the only real cause of this treatment that she gives Scientologists. Hitler did this with the Jews. It was a real cause of the concentration camps and the Nazis ex exterminating thousands. This is what will happen, but in a very different way in this new generation. So she'll just basically discriminate against us, um, against people of new religions, um, on social media. And she'll cause, you know, a sort of uproar with the insane people. No sane person really understands or um, really um, agrees with what she's doing. No sane person has ever agreed with what she does. And if they... And it's funny because I'll have to say something on that is that um, many have reached out to me and have asked me questions after they read this um, and have um, basically stated that there's some things that they've heard from from different people, you know, and they're like, oh, well, is that true? Or, you know, she said this or she said that I believe this, but I don't believe that it kind of rattles in their mind a lot sane people's minds because it's not true truth as is is truth sits with you and you can understand it and you don't have to keep thinking about it right that's what that's what i mean by as is is the light doesn't stick in your universe it's just done it's completed you don't have to think about it anymore right lies they stay in there and you know they stay in your universe they stay in your mind and you end up thinking about um Oh, is it true? Is it not true? You start to f you start fighting with yourself on it. That shouldn't ever happen, right? So you need truth. That's why I wrote this book. Because um, if I were to explain it to somebody, it would take a long time for me to explain it. So that's why I wrote a book on it. 33 chapters worth. Um, now, in, 
in, in this book, chapter three, it's called The Lifetime of Lying. Again, this is about her, you know, this whole entire book's about her. Um, and her affiliations with people and her, um, and her, you know, methods of attacking new religions. You, you don't normally, you don't want to support that, right? So you want to expose it so that the sane people don't fall for it. Um, so here's, here's one of the things right here that I wanted to just get across to you here in this chapter three. In Leah's universe, she has 80, 80 million lawyers, attorneys, PR spokespeople, and people that actually want to be her friend. This is all in her mind and it actually hasn't manifested into reality at all. In the many years she has been living and breathing on this planet. It is quite a shift in viewpoint when she finds out that the reality is not what she's been viewing in her mind. And thus, she th th thus when she does, she throws a tantrum, as you see many, many times. Leah wants you to believe that she is exposing new religions and also, ha also that she escaped new religions. Again, these are all things that have not manifested into full-blown reality. These are buzzwords, tabloid statements, and rumors in hopes that they will stay in people's minds when they think of receiving real help. Now, based on that, you know how I just said, lies stick with people, right? Because they don't understand them. Because it's not true, right? So they stick with people's minds and they end up having to think with it more and more and more. So, what, so based on that statement, if you look at that one paragraph that I just stated there, it's not sitting well in her universe because it's not true. Right? And it's not true for others as well. So therefore, it's going to stick in your universe until you find out for yourself the truth. Um... Now, what's funny is I got to share with you this one point here because this is kind of mind blowing that somebody would actually, you know, um, expose what they're going to do in the future. <laughs> this is an apostate right now. I will not say his name, but I'll say what he stated under penalty of perjury in the, in the United States. This is what he said. They, anti-Scientologists, view the church as their lottery ticket and pursue, and pursue their jackpot with lies. Say so, um, and I won't say his name. I don't want to say his name. That would be bringing attention to him. But um, it's in the book so that everything kind of adds, kind of gives you the truth, gives you the full understanding of it, right? Um, so in reality, so I say in here, Leah in reality is only passing off wrong information. And if anyone knows that it is wrong, it is the person living the life of a Scientologist and actually is a Scientologist, right? So you and I, if you, if you were a Scientologist, if you are a Scientologist, I'm a Scientologist. So when somebody says something against my religion, um, right, against, the, against my religion, and it's definitely wrong because I know the truth about it, um, you know, she's not asking any real people uh, these questions. She's not. She doesn't care about. She doesn't care about it. She's only making money, and I'll explain more about that later. Um, uh, see, this is another another apostate said this question. Uh, apostate means somebody who deserted their religion, their cause, their belief, you know, their political party, whatever, right? Their movement. So it says, tell enough lies and make enough allegations, and an impression will be created, which accomplishes the end of destroying your reputation no matter how untrue the allegations are. Um, that's from one of, the, one of the attackers under penalty of perjury in the United States. And he also said it um, while he was in the church to BBC, which is pretty interesting. So that should show you a little bit about kind of the operation that they're running so that you kind of understand that um, it shouldn't be believed and that you have more data now than anybody else out there. Um, and that was only on page 16 and there's two hundred, there's over 200 pages in this book. It's insane. Um, now not many people know why she, um, why this person why, is no longer in the church. I'll touch on it, but then the rest is actually in this book. So, um, 
You should get you should get your copy. Reach out to me if you if you um want help with that. But um, it's because she didn't follow the codes, uh, the ethics ethics and justice codes of the Church of Scientology. She thought they were um, impossible to follow because her ethics level is so far down the chute that she literally had to make stuff up to make it seem like she couldn't, that she that they're so impossible. But they're they're not. They're super. You if you're if you're a Scientologist, um, you'd understand that these ethics codes help you in life and keep you pr keep you producing keep you productive keep you ethical keep you geared to your port to, to towards your purpose in life um not get distracted from things like you know excessively drinking promiscuity um you know drugs you know it, it keeps you on the straight routes and it keeps you um healthy and well and happy and keeps your your, um, every keep your aspects in life all producing very very well. I'm pretty sure you understand what I'm talking about. But um, so I also include people who have actually said stuff in here about cool things about the ethics, the ethic codes of the church, which is cool. Um, people that are either in the church or are in another faith but have that are using the, the codes of the Scientologists, which actually is really cool. Um, cool. And then the aftermath of the aftermath, this is a chapter on her and her aftermath. And um, it actually exposes something pretty interesting. And I want to share that with you here because I think it would be, um, it would be wrong if I didn't share it with you because it's kind of, I think it's I think it's pretty funny. I think it'll actually get my point across faster if I tell you it. It says this is a conversation with um, a person that recently left Leah's club and exposed her club. Um, so here's what he said. It's like a, it's kind of like an interview, right? He he's basically gives a transcript of his conversation with her. Um, so the first thing that he says to to Leah is this. I'm really impressed how you guys had the... Now, stick with me a little bit here because there's a twist. So it may seem weird, but it's... Trust me, I'll never put anything weird in this. It's all approved. All coordinated, all good. It says, I'm really impressed how you guys had the courage to do that and share that with people. I mean, that's really personal right there. I got one problem with it, though. I mean, I think it was really terrible how you just dumped it all on your mother and made her look like she was the villain of the piece and somehow and unintelligent and stupid and... And, um, and gullible. Leah goes, no, 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 you didn't get it at all. This wasn't an actual session, therapy session. This whole thing was planned and scripted. He goes, you literally acted? Leah goes, yeah, we literally just listen. That's how it works, honey doll. This is what she said. That's how you do it. It's not reality. I work out and plan out all of these episodes and we figured them out beforehand. Who's going to say what? Who's going to do what? What do you think? What, I was going to put a camera on myself? So she's inventing things, and she's scripting things, and they, what she's saying isn't real. It isn't true. It isn't real. It isn't factual. And um, this exposes it right here. So there it is. I just read that part for you. Bam. Um, so basically... Yeah, this posse, her posse is only running along with her because it is, it's a big hoax and a ploy for some big winnings on attacking the church of Scientology. She has either paid off or promised these individuals millions of dollars and in incredible amounts of fame for this purpose, if it even is a purpose. It is quite sad that someone would be fooled with this, but in this society it is almost an opportunity that this is that this is hard to pass up because there's no ethics in the society right now and we need to put in more ethics into society because otherwise these people like this you know and I have to write these books and we have to get the information out because there's no ethics on this on this planet you know and we need to put ethics in on it you know so take it or leave it that's that's my datum um then she exposes she exposes herself um, on ABC 2020, which is really funny. She goes, I don't work for free. 
This is a very demanding job. She's acting like she's, she's needed, right? I mean, I'm just a crappy has-been actress who is trying to make a dollar off my church. What do you think, uh, what do you think about that, Dan? Now, he's, she's referring to the host of ABC 2020. If you've ever watched ABC 2020, that's the... Um, anyway, so there's that one. And then she goes on The Hollywood Reporter, and she says... Um, and one and the, the lady who's interviewing her goes, Leah, I want to turn to you. How much vetting is done of the people who are going to tell their stories to you? Is that something, like, do you have people who sort of make them prove their stories? Now, here's a, not really a shocking statement for me, but maybe shocking for you. Um, from what probably you've either heard or maybe you've heard from others or whatever, it says, she says this, back to the reporter. What? What do you want me to do? She's all defensive. She's um, scared because now she's being exposed faster than ever before. Um, she goes, what? What do you want me to do? Prove it to me? Yeah. W what do you want me to do? Prove it to me? You know, there's, so there's no vetting. I go take their word for it. And then the Hollywood Reporter um, goes ahead and um, asks her this question and says, and legal will let you get away with that? Leah says... Well, they have to, because they are all my people. So, um, the people that fall for this stuff, um, the people who fall for this stuff isn't, um, they, um, they aren't sane, because the truth's right there, in front of their eyes. I mean, this was on The Hollywood Reporter. I'm just listing off just little quotes. I'm not reading all of the information I found based on these statements, right? So I've done the research for you so that you get it, right? So that you understand it and that you can apply it and you can use it to helping other people and explaining it to them, right? Um, now, this is a quote from L. Ron Hubbard, right? Here's what he says. Individuals with criminal minds tend to band together since the presence of other criminals about them tends to prove their own distorted ideas of man in general. L. Ron Hubbard. So you can take that into this context, because I did, and it made a lot of sense. Um, it, yeah, it made a ton of sense, right? So now there's this next chapter, it's chapter five. Now I gotta probably speed up on this, because I'm probably not gonna have like an hour to do all of this, because I don't think we should spend that much time. But um, if you guys wanted a longer video, you can go ahead and let me know. And I can go ahead and post it on YouTube or, you know, whatever, what other platform or, you know, maybe just, you can even buy the book. <laughs> I think that would be the fastest way. But I, I can also do an interview or an overview on, um, on video as well. I'm going to go ahead and just tell you this chapter five is all about her being interviewed by the church while she was in the church. Um, and she basically... You know, she just, it's its so weird how she did this. She goes ahead and says this. This is just one of the many quotes in this, in chapter five, that she says about the church. And like a good thing about the church. She goes, with Scientology, I was able to have success in this business, which is the um, business of entertainment, without compromising my own integrity. And that's what Scientology has helped affirm for me. That was Leah Romani in 2002. Um, we have the most recent interview uh, being 2011 when she was in the, uh, she was at the Church of Scientology Englewood Grand Opening, and this is what she says um, when she was asked about the Grand Opening and how what it meant what it meant to her right it says it makes me feel whole. There's a piece of me now that was missing, and when I had the idea to start a mission here, a mission of Scientology is a smaller church. It's kind of like an introductory church to introduce the subject to a um, to a, a certain city or town or area um, in order to bring about a group um, of, of Scientologists, right? People that practice the religion. And then it then with more and more people being added onto this smaller church, it ends up being a bigger church and they get bigger and they get bigger and they expand, right? So this is, I'll read that again. It makes me feel whole. There's a piece of me now that was missing and when I had the idea to start a mission here, it really came out of having been raised in a community 
that was diverse. And when you move to California, you don't really have that neighborhood feeling. I didn't even know my neighbors until there was an earthquake. And the only reason you know them, them then is because they feel an obligation to knock on your door and go, are you okay? Reluctantly. But I didn't grow, I didn't grow up that way. I grew up in a community like this, Scientology. So for me, this is a piece of my heart. Again, she's referring to the Inglewood um, Church of Scientology grand opening, right, in 2011. This org represents actually getting out into the community and dealing one-on-one -on -one with an individual. It's about taking somebody who is on drugs, who is maybe walking off the street, going, what is this community center? What is this org? What is this church? Walking in and going, we can help you. You want to learn how to read? Sit down. I mean, to be able to connect our church with LRHs, which is L. Ron Hubbard, life betterment programs, it's just never been done. So for me, this is what it's all about. That was her in 2011. So there's that. And then I go into more about um, how she's lying. More, more detail in my next chapter, chapter 6. Chapter 7, she has, an, she has this um, obsession over the leader of the church because he has, um, what is it? He, he has what she doesn't, which is ethics, dedication, commitment, et, you know, I could say it again, ethics, drive, purpose. Um, he helps millions every single year, actually billions, to be honest, um, it's, it's incredible what he does, and the fact that she has so much obsession over him um, is explained in the book, chapter 7, right? Chapter 7. So there's that, and then chapter 8 goes over misconception. You can go ahead and read that misconception um, and how I, how I fact check it, and I go into the detail, um, and it's also in regards to you know, misconceptions in, in regards to all of that. You could just, you should just read it. It's cool. Now, um, ultimate failure of, of Leah. It goes into more detail about that. Legal, legal proceedings that she lost. Um, she always loses. And, um, and one of the main things that she forgot to cover up, which was, um, some individuals went out, um, well, escaped her grip and her web of lies and came out with statements in regards to it and um, did it under uh, penalty of perjury in, in the United States. Um, alrighty, cool. Yeah, while I'm talking to you guys, I'm getting a lot of notifications from people who are standing up, it looks like, to a lot of random, random, random stuff out there. Um, and then it goes over what the church, um, the perfect family is and in comparison to what hers was in um in the church um how she messed with her how she messed with her family what's the penalty of perjury the penalty of perjury is um in it's basically when you let me just give you the context right so when you're in court um you anything that you say when uh, when you're under oath when you're told to you know, account for your for your experiences, right? And you're supposed to like, oh yeah, I'm giving a testimony, right? When you give a testimony about your experiences, they are under penalty of perjury, meaning that, um, which is pretty funny because they're getting caught on it right now and we're exposing them a lot. Now, um, this is the emotional aftermath. I wrote a chapter on her... Um, her affiliation with actually the um, the passing of her stepsister, she um, yeah, it's a kind of a it's kind of an interesting thing. You should probably read. I won't I won't say it up on here. Yeah, no problem, Nicola. Um, now, really quickly, if you if you look at the chapters chapter titles, I won't I won't I won't um. I won't tell you all about it here because I want you to, you know, have that mystery and go, what? What is he talking about? But they have, they have something to do 
with um, her lies and her production. Because what I did is I fact-checked and I went ahead and debunked every single chapter, every single thing that she's ever said and um, every single thing that she's doing from um, a &E Networks. Right? So I did a whole chapter on that. Did a whole chapter on um, how she how they use the tabloids to their advantage, because the tabloids really have really um, they're they're not factual, so don't don't believe them. Because I could prove to you so many times on that. Um, I can t there's a I just got a question in regards to seeing if it is um, coordinated by by um people that are hi trudy um coordinated yes it is yes definitely all i do not one thing i want to say on that is that i get this question so many times <laughs> which is totally fine because I'm, I'm glad people are actually like um interested in it but yes it is and leslie your question on that is it it is yeah you just message me i'll message you back personally on that but it definitely is coordinated. These books don't have anything um, weird in them. Um, nothing that will um, harm anyone in any way, shape, or form. The information in here is completely true. And um, I'm not here to attack anybody um, in the church. I am a Scientologist. And um, I don't know what else to say. But um, if you have any more questions, do reach out to me. And I can answer it personally on my PM, which is personal message. But um, I went into the whole entire scene in, 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 the, in the back, I mean, in, in the past um, of all of the people that are against us um, and, and uh, what they're part of and how we can expose it and, and how, we can, how we can fight back and what they're scared, what they're scared of, right? What the attackers are scared of us doing, which is speaking up, just to let you know. Um, you know, witnesses. So I have a whole chapter on here in terms of how they use the legal system against, um, you know, how they use the legal system against us, but they never win because they're, they're lying. <laughs> um, and then I wrote a chapter on the sky isn't falling. You should definitely read that. I think you'd like it. It's super great. It tells you all of this cool, amazing stuff about the church. Um, I bet you you've heard something about, like, um, excommunicating and stuff, right? Um, excommunicating in any religion. I went, I went ahead and did a chapter on that. As you can see, I have this whole entire thing where it goes over Jehovah Witnesses. Can you see that? Yeah, Jehovah Witnesses, Mormonism, um, you know, all of, these, all of these different religions. I want to just compare them and show you that it's not an unusual thing. Right. There's even a there's even a statement from the Jewish where is it? The Jewish virtual library. Um, in regards to that, I wanted to give people some data when they're reading the book about um, about the church. So it's services expansion, correction, and Scientology today. So all super cool. Goes over some statements of um, some statements from the leader of the church as well as the different phases in the church, like golden age of golden age of knowledge, the ideal organizations, just to give the person the information that they need in order to make a, um, a legitimate decision, right? And to make, um, yeah, just to make a legitimate decision. And then I go over, you know, Scientology auditing for them. This is all in statements from the church. So it's not me providing my own detail into it. I see statements from the church. All statements. See? Even more statements from the church. See? So these are these are all... As you can see, I worked with many people on this. It's really neat. I just went ahead and laid it all out for you. And laid it all out for everybody that um, might have heard some weird stuff. You know? I just want people to have, you know, a better understanding of things. Um... The greatest good, it's kind of like a plea for you. Kind of like, hey, look, the greatest good for the person that you're helping and um, getting the person into more communication about 
um, the church and getting them the truth, while the greatest good will definitely straighten them up and kind of go, hey, there's a bigger picture on it all kind of thing, right? Um, I'm looking for something. Give me a second. Yeah, the greatest good has a bunch of statements from medical doctors in relation to how, how Scientology has helped state senators. I didn't say their names on here because I wanted to keep their names kind of, you know, away from the attacker's grasp. But um, police inspector generals, city officials, kind of stuff like that. Um, a lot of interesting things have occurred in terms of people going, hey, what is that Golden Era production studio over there? It's pretty beautiful, but I've, but I don't think public are able to tour. Um, if you called Golden Era Productions, I kind of explain it in here, but um, it's a whole entire chapter on that. I kind of give them more information because sometimes it's a, it's a misunderstood. Sometimes you know, I explain more about Clearwater, and um, basically statements from the church. Statements from the church, um, and then, state, yeah, founder of the church says, the aim, I have the aims of Scientology in here, um, and then the Saving Our Students Foundation of Tampa Bay has, their, has, has a statement in here, the superintendent of the P Pinellas um, Regional Juvenile Detention Center is in here. We do a lot of good. And, and, and Clearwater, just to let you know. A lot of good. Um, a lot of good. It's amazing. Now, what's funny is I actually have a chapter on censorship. And it's basically... And the reason why I have a, I have a chapter on that, and I'll explain it. Because in the chapter, it goes over how the attackers want to censor us. Right? They want to censor the Scientologists. They want to censor the people of new religions. Because we're giving people the truth about our own religion, right? They have no clue what we're doing, you know? So they're making stuff up. They want to censor us. So I have a whole chapter on how they do that. Well, how and how and why they do that, and then how to defeat it, which is super great. Um, now, she was recently exposed completely, um, and we're just going to keep pushing these materials out because it's going to just help with that a lot. But... Um, um, I, I will have, I, I want to say something really, really cool. How do I say it? Um, I don't want to give you any names, right? Cause I don't want to, cause this is a live stream and all of the other stuff, you know? Um, but I could definitely go ahead and, you know, be in communication with you over my Facebook messenger or text if you have my number and other such stuff. But if you did have a question on it, um, the attacking show that they had, it was a hate piece. Um, it was a hate show, right? Um, it has been canceled because of our doing. Because of, because of statements like this, right, where it exposes everything about her. It's huge. It's over 200 pages. Right, so I went into that. Um, so the, it was the end of that. And then this is the last chapter. It goes over a really neat dude, but he's being attacked right now. So I decided to put the truth out there about him so that people knew about him, you know? Um, and then again, I do have a, um, an affidavit from Mr. Hubbard in the back. Super great affidavit. Explains a lot. Kind of gets the truth out there a little bit more. All of what I stated in this book have to do with legal statements and actual facts. And, um, you know, the affidavit from L. Ron Hubbard, you should read it. It's really neat. Um, let me find out the... He wrote it in 1976, and he signed it. It's right here. Ta-da! See, so he signed it. I typed it, but if you wanted to see the original one, let me know, and I can send it to you. Um, I have a receipt from a, an attacker getting paid $10,000 for a hate piece on Tom Cruise. So, it, see, it shows you that these people... Are getting paid for this and that's why they're doing it so if we stop people from paying people to attack other people this they wouldn't get paid and they'd have to go find a real job 
And then there's an IRS tax form in regards to that as well. Um, again, I, what, I, what I said in my, my, um, my previous video on the truth about apostates, um, again, the apost the, one of the attackers, in um, he was in the church, right? And he basically confessed. <laughs> and he wasn't, he, wasn't, um, he wasn't ordered to. He wanted to. It was really funny. Um, he knew he had screwed up in the church. And um, um, he called himself a coward and all this other stuff. And I went ahead and I, he wrote it straight to Mr. Miscavige. David Miscavige, the leader of the church. He wrote it all. It's in this statement. See, so there's one, and then there's two pages there. But you can read it all right there. I highlighted the parts that you should read because I think it's hilarious that he even did that. Um, he said... as I obviously still had not confronted the depths of my ethics and suppressive acts. So he admits it. And he goes, much love. And see, so he signs it off. And I'll, as well, I can send you, uh, you know, if you, if you needed to handle somebody on some misconception that they have, let me know, and I can definitely help you out and, you know, send those kind of statements to you. Um, again, here's his affidavit. That same guy did an affidavit before, before um, you know, he did it on his, own, on his own willingness and everything. I highlighted all the parts you should read. If you can't read them all, just read the highlighted parts. And those are the main things people talk about, you know, so it helps you out a lot. You can just take this with you. Um, what else do I have here? Oh, yeah, and then another one, another affidavit. Remember, everything I'm saying in this book is based on affidavits and true accounts, you know? So it's not, it's not anything I made up or invented. Um, again, but this last affidavit I just showed you ha is like 14 or 17 pages. It's pretty insane. She, of course, signed it, and she provided her driver's license and all this other stuff to, pr to, to prove it, to prove that it was real and that was her. Um... Oh yeah, and then a guy who confesses that he was part of um, a fake affidavit um, against the church, and he was caught. Um, and then I also have it. I also did what I did is I ended up having a um, an acknowledgments page, which was super neat. So I acknowledged some of the main people that um, you know really inspired me and was re were really there with for me and um, helped me out along the way, making this occur for you and for all, for us all, you know, and for the future. Um, and here, I'd, li I'd like to just go ahead and um, read a couple of parts in this acknowledgement so that I can put it out on live stream. Every step of the way, these friends in particular have given me inspiration, purpose, knowledge, experience, and backup. To those, uh, to those at my church, that have helped me gain the spiritual freedom that I've dreamed about, the knowledge that I've thirsted for, and for helping provide me with the expansive tools I have today. These are the people that I like to acknowledge, you know, specifically, but everybody else I do appreciate as well. Ron, David, Luis, Rex, Jim, Jesse, Sarah, Marie, Grant, Kirsty, Elena, and many others. My haters and keyboard warriors, I couldn't have written the properties without the complete motivation I received through the amount of ignorance that is thrown my way. And I say that in the funniest of way. To all my friends and former classmates, former colleagues, former co-workers, former bosses and managers, mentors, investors, where I'm at, where I'm at right now is because of you and your support. Thank you. These properties are fully my own work. They don't symbolize any of the religion's beliefs, practices, nor do these writings represent the religion in any shape or form. These are my writings based on my research. So any views that I have that are my own, I'm not going to put on the church because they're my own view, right? 
Um, but I do have to say that the statements from the church are theirs, and that are those are their statements, and um, those are the churches. But my own views, I like to keep as my own, so that I don't put them on anybody else's. Right? Um, hi, Winnie. Those who would like more information on the Church of Scientology should visit their official website, Scientology.org. Read L. Ron Hubbard's books, found online on, in libraries, bookstores, and at their churches all around the world, as he is the founder and would know what it is, how it was developed, how he researched it all, how to use it, and every other detail you could possibly think of. I appreciate the time you invested into reading this property. And then, I invite, and then I invite them to my next property. Right? I invite them to my next property, which is super great. Hi, Winnie. And then I have a whole glossary. Again, but this is a little bit more intense. Like, this glossary has all, all information. It's huge. Um, See, so yeah, I'll just, I'm skimming through, skimming through, but there's a ton. Like, a ton. Um... I clear up all of the, ab I mean, the um, abbreviations and um, terms and, you know, misconceptions that some people have. And then a huge references section I have in here. Huge. Which is cool. So you can go ahead and just find out where I got everything from. And then, guess what? That's it. Woohoo! So, um, buy Escaping Leah. Get your copy. If you want an ebook, reach out to me. If you want to support the project directly, go ahead and reach out to me. And um, I'll give you I'll give you a way to do that. Um, go to my website exposingcrimes.com. Buy the trilogy that I have, all three books. It goes the truth about apostates. Then it goes this book, so they can get the broadcast interrupted. Yeah, Facebook doesn't like when I do these lives. It um it doesn't like that I put out the truth. So it if you want to watch it again from the beginning. It's it what it does it's good it good does a good job in compiling all of the data and all of the video so that there's no interruptions in the middle so you can watch it all the way from the beginning to the end. But I do want to say one thing is that by my trilogy exposingcrimes.com it helps the project directly gets these books out to more people helps me help you um, disseminate and um, just get the truth out there and really I mean these materials help everybody when they're out there they help everybody and um, I really do respect each and every one of you and I really love your questions and I love answering them and um, you know I write these books and I do my things that I do to help you and to help mankind and I expose the people that need to be exposed and help the people that need to be helped so, um, I super, super, super appreciate it. Reach out to me if you need anything. Um, love you guys a lot. And, um, if you guys want me to do another live on another topic, um, uh, let me know. I have a lot going on, um, live-wise in the future. I got a weekend full of lives, um, two lives back-to-back. -back. Paul Marvenko and Sarah Nadler. Religious Freedom on Saturday with Sarah Nadler and Paul Marvenko with Marketing on Sunday. Um, so definitely, definitely, definitely reach out. Let me know if you need anything. I think I'm going to be doing a live tomorrow on the Hidden Agenda. I may actually do it Friday. Um, yeah, we're doing an amazing job. I just wanted to do that whole overview for you. Sorry if it's that long. The book is long, but I'm going to tweak some things and make it so that